All right, so in this section, we're going to get some practice balancing equations. So let's just do some problems and work through some sets. So this is problem 5.31 from the back of your textbook. So if you wanted to look at that one later, or ones that are similar to that in the back of the textbook. So these problems it asks you which of these following equations are balanced and balance those that need it. So this one is A. So to start evaluating them, I start writing out what I have on both sides of the equation. Now, typically when we're doing our reaction types, you've seen that different reaction types as far as double displacement and acid-base neutralization, they deal with ionic compounds typically that have a cation and an anion component. So when I'm working with water under these circumstances, I like to think about water in its ionic type of form. So if you've got HOH, so if you write your water out like HOH, it actually is going to look more like an ionic compound where one of these hydrogens could be the cation component and then the OH portion of the molecule is the anion. So we know that the OHs are going to be the hydroxyl ion and the H plus is the proton. So if we think about water being in this form when we're doing these equations, we can see the rearrangement or the double displacement that's going to happen here. So this proton, or when it's acting as a cation, is going to change places with the calcium, and the calcium is going to go with the hydroxide component, or the OH anion that's part of the water molecule. The H's are then going to come over with carbon, and when they actually bond with the carbon, they form a covalent interaction. So this is going to end up being a covalent bond, and so when we said their covalent bonds, the hydrogens, when it's acting covalently, will come following the carbon. So the end molecule here is C2H2. So it's still a double displacement reaction though, and so you're trading this hydrogen with this calcium essentially. So this is coming over essentially like that. But to balance this equation then, we need to make sure that we have the same number of different components on both sides. So when we've got two water molecules that are over here, it's like we have the two hydrogens that are acting like the cation over here, and we've got two hydroxyl groups as well, which we also have here. So we've got the OH component, the H component, the CA component, and the C component, or the carbon, and we'll have the same components sent over on this side. So this is essentially what I do when I try to balance my equations. I first see how much of each thing are on both sides, and then I see that they're the same, or I change the coefficients in front to balance them. So we can see we've got one calcium on this side, we've got one calcium on this side, so these guys balance. We've got two hydroxides on this side, we've got two hydroxides on this side as well. We've got two H's over on this side, and we've got two H's over on this side, and we've got two carbons and two carbons. So this equation is balanced and we don't have to do anything further with it. So let's look at B. Alright, so again we can just write our elemental components out and we can see if this equation is going to be balanced or not or if we're going to have to change any of the coefficients. So in this case I'm just going to write out all the elements that are on both sides and just tally the whole thing up first since these compounds are a little bit more complex. So we've got carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen on both sides, right? So if I count up all the carbons over here, I've got two. How many carbons on this side? I've got two. So far so good. My hydrogens, I've got eight. Nothing over here, so I've got a total of eight. My, carbon, my hydrogens over here, I've got eight as well. Okay. My nitrogens, I've got two, 
four, six. So two times two is four, plus the two there over here. I've got six total nitrogens. I've got four here, and that's it. So my nitrogens are not balanced. Okay, and let's see how many oxygens we've got. I've got none in this compound, and I've got eight in this one, two times the four. So there's eight oxygens there. I've got four oxygens in the carbon dioxide, plus the four oxygens in the water molecules. I've got eight here. So everything balances except for the nitrogens, right? So the nitrogens are the only ones we have to fix. And fortunately, it's going to be an easy fix because we just have to change the coefficient on this guy. So instead of being 2, if we change this one to 3 and 2s, that would give us 6 nitrogens on this side. And once we have 6, we're going to be balanced on both sides. So that's A and B from this problem. Let's work C and D as well. All right, so let's take a look at this one. So on this side, I've got magnesium, oxygen, and iron. And so I should have these guys on this side as well. I've got magnesium over here. I've got oxygen, and I've got iron. So I've got three magnesiums on this side so far. Also three oxygens and two irons. On this side, I have the two iron, three oxygen, and the three magnesium. So this equation is balanced, so we don't have to do anything to this one. Now let's look at D. Alright, so this one already is obviously not balanced. So right now, my nitrogens, I have two, my oxygens, I have one, and on this side, my nitrogens, I have two, and my oxygens, I have two. Because remember, oxygen by itself has to be bonded to itself in its elemental form. It forms that diatomic molecule. Dinitrogen oxide breaks down into nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. We are going to have to fix our balancing of the equations. So the easiest way to do that is find the lowest common denominator to get this to be an even number of oxygens because you're never going to get them balanced with something that's even on the other side. So if you have evens and odds, you're going to end up having to pick a coefficient that's going to give you an even number on the odd side. So usually you can use our cross multiplication rules. If we have one over on this side, we'll have to multiply this one by one. We have two on this side, and so we'll have to multiply this one by two. And so our multiplication product is what we're going to try as our coefficients on either side. So I'm going to try to balance my oxygens by putting a 2 in front of my nitrogen. So we'll put the 2 here. And we'll put the 1. We'll leave this one the 1. Oh, now it looks just like number 10. <laughs> so 1's are again are implied, and so you don't have to write them. How about if I write it like that? I don't know if that helps. Okay. So anyway, we've got four nitrogens now on this side. And now we've got two oxygens. So we still only have two oxygens on this side. So the oxygens are balanced now. But now my nitrogens are off. I've got two on this side, and I've got four on this side. So we can easily fix that by multiplying this nitrogen times two. And that's going to give us a total of four nitrogens now on this side. So this equation is now balanced by writing it 2 and 2 O, yielding 2 N2 molecules and 1 O2 molecule. So that's problem 5.31. All right, so let's do a few from question 5.33. I'm going to choose B again so that we see another problem that's worked with water. So if we're looking at this reaction, this reaction is a synthesis reaction because we're taking two things, combining them together into a single thing. So this is the A plus B equals C format that we saw for synthesis reactions. And we can see that this is totally not balanced right now. Let's just list the elements that we have that we need to balance. We need H, P, and O. And currently on this side, we've got two hydrogens. 
we've got four phosphorus and we've got 10, 11 oxygens. On this side, we've got four oxygens, we've got one phosphorus, and we've got three hydrogens. Okay, since our water and our oxygens are split, this is kind of nice because our lowest common denominator with 4 and 11 would be 44, and that's not very nice to deal with. But we can actually split these apart. This is actually 10 plus 1, right, because we've got 10 on this side and only 1 on this side. So this guy is actually easy to change to 2, right? We can have two water molecules, and we can make this side even up pretty well. And then it's much easier to get 12 oxygens that way, right? We would have to multiply this side by 3, and that would give us 12 oxygens. However, that's going to give us 9 hydrogens, which is going to be weird. So we're going to need a number that's going to give us an even amount of hydrogens, and we're going to have to be at least over 12 oxygens. So what if we tried 4? Let's see if we can get something to work with 4. So if we put 4 in front of these guys, that would end up giving us 12 hydrogens, and that would give us 16 oxygens, right? So let's see if we can get that many on this side. So to get 12 hydrogens off of this guy, we would need to put 6 out here. So we're going to say we're going to put 4 here. So some of this is kind of trial and error, what you're going to end up getting. But we can end up getting 12 if we put 6 out here. We'll end up getting 12. So our hydrogens are balanced here. Let's see what happens to our oxygens. Currently, we've got, we've got oxygen split now, right? We've got the 10 that come from this one. And if we put 6 out here, that would be 6, and we would have 16, right? So those guys are going to be balanced now as well. Hopefully, we can balance out our phosphorus too. The phosphorus here is 4, now that we've multiplied it by that, and those balance as well. So yay, we made our equation balance. So sometimes it takes a little work. You know, we initially tried three here because we were looking at our oxygens, but we found when we did that, it ended up giving us an odd number of hydrogens, which we were never going to be able to balance over here. So just trying the next number up, trying four, we found a workable solution that gave us a balanced equation. So don't give up if the first thing that you try doesn't work.